Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beyond the Sale podcast brought to you by joesg.com. My name is Protaz and I work in the shipping department. And today I'm joined by Aaron from the logistics department. <laughs> and we are going to have probably a special guest come on the show here um, later in the podcast. So our topic of this podcast is logistics and warehouse management and what that means for us and what we do in each department to um, be lean and we're going to talk about lean and what it means to us and we want to cover a few things that we evolved in the past years regarding the ways we manage our warehouse and what logistical strategies we improved on in our management worst to best and current and what everything like that means to us and so Aaron's going to start us off here and he's going to talk about lean and um, what lean is. Let me get my headphones right. plugged in. I unplugged it. Okay, it's working now. So let's get her started. Um, I am Aaron and I work in kind of my own department. I work oh. with most departments, shipping. I do a lot of listing and making sure that all our inventory is up to date and all that. So um, I lean first started when we moved into this warehouse. We worked from the garage at my house and then, so Joe's the owner of the company, he's my brother. So we worked in the garage, then we moved, or from his room to the garage to the sh to this shop. So um, wh what Lean is, is making sure that our culture is, like every, we're improving every day. As we walk into work, we're improving, we're making sure everything's, everything's better than it, better the next day. Yeah, leave everything better than you left it, kind of thing. Go. Yeah. There you go. So, um, when we first introduced it, everybody was like, oh, I don't like this idea, this and that, and then it really caught on, and every day, we walk, come into work, we have a morning meeting, after morning meeting, we'll have our, um, well, everybody separates, and we go do our 3Sing. Yeah. So, we do our 3Sing when we come in in the morning, so, well, let me start here what's lean to me and what it means to me and how I put those aspects into the business and strive for success. So well, when were you first introduced to it? I was first introduced um, June 2017, I believe when I just started. Um, when I got hired, Joe gave me a book or audio book to listen to. And I don't read books, books don't like me. And I mean, audio books are cool because you get to listen to them. And so I'm like, okay, whatever, let me give it a shot. And he gave me this book called Two Second Lean. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And, you know, I started listening to it. And it's a four-hour book. Like, it's it's pretty hardcore. Like, for me, like, I have a hard time reading the Bible. So when it comes to, like, bigger books, I'm like, you know, it's I, I struggle with it. So basically, um, he gave me this book. I started getting into it. And it's talking about, like, business and how you should keep it lean. And, you know, how, how to strategize and you know, make things more like more improvements and how we um, just strive for be to be better uh, people in the business. And I'm like, just listening to this book, there's so much like information, there's change very, points, very, improvements, very informational, book. very informational. If you guys want to listen to a good book, that's like going to help you in your business, like legit. It'll help you in your life too. It's, it's yeah. it just helps you be a better version of yourself. Yeah. Like, it Cause it helps you do, do new things every day that mm -hmm. improve your life. Yeah, it's like an improvement book. Like you're constantly going to be improving, constantly going to look for change points. Things are going to change. Like your desk is going to change. Like when I started, we had these like this cubicle in the shipping department. And, um, you know, after Joe went to Japan or whatever, he came back with some great ideas. And we started changing our desks. And like it got more comfier because I'm six foot five. So. <laughs> For me, for like a little desk, my arms hurt, you know, I cry a lot and I complain. <laughs> so um, we were able to build our own desk to whatever we wanted and that was really cool. And that was super lean because now, you know, my arm's not sore, I'm good to go. I'm able to look at the screen better, I'm, I'm better at processing things. And so I have less strains on my neck and my back and stuff like that. So lean is really important to us because we get to change the way our business is every day. We get to do small improvements and it's, we're not making big improvements. We're making two second improvements every single day. And that's what it talks about in the book. And I think that's really cool. So, well, um, 
let, let's go back to before you were here, mm-hmm. before everything, before lean mm-hmm. actually happened. Um, we'd have like I'd come into work whenever I want. We have tables lined up, so we didn't have this part of the warehouse. We only had the first half of it, and I'd walk in. We have tables lined up down one wall. Everybody has rolling chairs. We'd have like, um, I remember Daniel would sit in his chair. He'd need some parts, so he rolls back in his chair to the parts, grabs his parts. He never stood up, so we'd always be, we'd always be sitting. And then that was probably one of the biggest things about Lean, why people didn't want it. It's because everybody stands. Everybody has a standing desk. Mm-hmm. You didn't like that idea at first. At first, because, like, you know, I work construction most of my life. Let's get it this way. I work construction, so I'm standing in a sense, but I'm walking around. I'm up, going up down ladders, you know, up downstairs <laughs> and do carrying things. You know, I'm not focusing on standing. Over here, you know, the first little bit was tough, like on my feet all day, you know, from, you know, walking around to standing, shipping. I did walk around here, you know, to get the parts or whatever, but it's not the same as construction. It's not fast paced, but in a sense, I like standing because you need something. You don't need to get up. That's already waste in motion, and that's another thing with three S. There's eight wastes or three three S. Um, sorry, with <laughs> lean. lean, with lean, there are Tim Woods. eight 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 wastes. Tim Woods. Tim Woods. Transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overproduction, overprocessing, defects, and skills. Every single day. We have one part in our morning meeting, so we all read off a script, and it's the same thing every day. But we have, we have is okay. So the, the script, the script is the same, but the answers are different every single day. They have to be different. They, well, yeah, yeah. Because you're doing something different every mm-hmm. day. Exactly, and so we talk about our improvements. We talk about our defects, our changes that are happening in the business constantly every single day. And defects do happen. Every business has defects, and it's cool that we talk about them because we have to grow from them, which is sweet. So. That's another thing that we introduce here. We have a morning meeting and everyone is involved and Joe likes to pick on us and have each person be the leader, which is super cool because a lot of people are shy. They just stand in the corner or whatever. Well, pretend. if you if you come in here shy, you're not going to be shy when you leave. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. So Joe makes it. It's so all like I say, like Joe will pick on you like that guy that's like kind of slouched and sleeping in the back. Just, you know, had a rough night. <laughs> uh, um, he will be like, hey. You know, like Eric or hey, usually have William. Walk weekend. Yeah, <laughs> uh, usually on the, that's a Monday thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, he'll just be like, "Hey, you want to be the leader? Get up there and lead." So you have to, you know, you gotta tell you know your improvements. That's been a newer thing though. Mm-hmm. Joe used to always lead, mm-hmm. and then we had probably the last couple of weeks he like picks somebody new every day. Mm-hmm. And if it's like he has a bunch of stuff to say, he'll usually lead. But if mm-hmm. not, then it's. Yeah, and that's cool because in the book it talks about, you know... Um, Everybody's a leader for everyone's, themselves. Yeah, everyone's a leader. So basically in how they do them, and that's where we got our morning meetings from too. So um, in the in the book it talks about how they have morning meetings and each person is... A, it's a random person every day that has to share and lead in the company. And that's how you become from being comfortable to, you know, um, reaching out to the fellow co-workers and just being a leader. So... We don't have managers. We have leaders. We have yeah. like probably five main leaders in the company. Mm-hmm. You have a question, you walk up to a leader, they'll usually have an answer for you. So, mm-hmm. um, of course, we all have to like account to Joe. Joe's our boss, but mm-hmm. that's not like the main thing. Like we, if we have a question, we go to somebody else mm-hmm. and somebody else usually will have the answer. Yep. And so another thing about lean is like me coming from a construction background. I did some retail work back when I was younger, but... I mostly stuck to my electrical career and, you know, starting off, Joe was telling me about 3S, how everyone has to clean and, you know, um, take care of each station and stuff like that. And like when I work construction, you know, like my tools were in a job box, you know, you come in the morning, you take them out and you're good to go. Like, well, the thing is, it takes you probably 30 minutes to find your tools. It's all just, well, in a, it's all just in a pile. Well, basically yeah, it was 50, <laughs> 50 electricians, you know, on the job. And Everybody just throws their crap into exactly, one pile. And then and all it's... your screwdrivers fall out to the bottom. Now you're digging. So, um, when I worked, I didn't know anything about lean back in the day. Um, I had material carts, um, for like all kinds of fittings and stuff. Um, s- semi, uh, organized, but it's kind of <laughs> sloppy too. But when I definitely, when I started here, everything changed. Like now I'm more lean at home and I I try to organize and make sure everything's good to go. So that way it's not a visual eyesore for me. 
So I try to, you know, at least park one car into the garage, into my two car garage. So, you know, at least fit something into there. And, you know, every day I try to clean and be more, more clean in the, in our departments. And so lean is cool. Like there's so many ways to think about it and um, so many ways we can apply it in our businesses. So, so I, I can give you guys an example of like the lean, one of the biggest lean improvements we have done probably in the last year which was we got into skew ball and before skew ball, I'll explain what skew ball is in a second, but before skew ball, every single day we'd come in and we have to re update the inventory. We have to go count exactly what there is and we'd oversell pro D could say we would oversell. You'd have to cancel orders all the time. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like we don't like to cancel orders cause like that's potential like money. And well, that's just kind of screwing over a customer cause the customer's yeah. like, Oh, I got a hell of a deal. And then you're like, psych <laughs> yeah pretty much well listing error right and, and it does happen we do over list but it still happens it still happens it's a it's but a defect not, that not, not as much as, as common. It, yeah not as common so so what skewball is is a software that's inventory management software and we put all our in inventory into it and um once a product sells it automatically takes it out and we have a couple different platforms we sell on so it removes it from all the platforms instead of us going through all three or four platforms that we have and removing individually how much we sold and counting how much it just does it all for us it's super lean super efficient it makes sense um defects do happen but not as much not as frequently like we did before well you'd have to say that's probably the biggest lean improvement of the yep. of the year yep we have SKUs for everything. Everything matches Well, not up. everything. We're, well, you know, we've got we're at least 25% in, but still. You know, we have a lot of products and a lot of parts. That's the hardest part. You got to skew every, every part out, you know. And We have, okay. So, for example, an Apple Watch probably has 50 screws in it. Yeah. Every screw is different. So, we have to put in a different SKU for every single screw. Uh, can we get the Apple Watch tech to come in and validate that the 50 screws are different? I mean, <laughs> I can pull one. I think I have one somewhere there. I'm sure, the, <laughs> I'm sure like, the screen is glued on or, like, the, I don't even know. Well, no, the screen is glued on, but you have a motherboard, yeah. you have a Taptic engine, you have a battery, you have yeah. everything screwed on, you have the back cover. I feel like I should just rip one open to find out if the 50 screws are, <laughs> are actually the same or they're not. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, so when we use SKU all, it helped us just do inventory management and then it helped shipping a lot. So Brody yeah. can explain how it helped shipping. So everything back in the day, um, or not, I can't say everything. There was a few things that had skewed and, and what we have here are shelves. And let me, let me go back a little bit here. So back in the day, there's a thing called wheels, wheels, wheels here. So there's um, a video, Matt, roll it up. We finally have a nice table and it's on wheels also so <laughs> everything on wheels man we only have two more couches those things go on wheels and everything in our warehouse will be on wheels everything from our kitchen to our everything <laughs> anything that's not attached to a wall is on wheels direction how we want the shelves why we want the shelves there it makes it super simple when stuff is on wheels and now i'm super excited that we actually are getting to the point where we're completely eliminating anything stationary i love wheels can you explain if your shelves were on wheels back in the day or not? No, nothing was on wheels. Okay, so... Before we just had plastic racks. Okay, so they had plastic racks. So that's back in the day. And then Lean came out. Um, Paul Akers came to the rescue. Da -da -da. <laughs> so basically, um, they decided to put all the shelves on wheels, which makes it like 50 times easier to roll the shelf out of that position and put it somewhere else. If we don't, if we've cleared the inventory on the shelf, we can remove the shelf, move it into the tech department and start using it for um, service repairs. One example of that would be this desk that I have, I'm looking at right now. It was by Joe's desk for about six months. Mm -hmm. And within those six months, I'd roll it back in here and back. And it's like two minutes, a I think, minute. I think we rolled it into the bathroom one time too. Not mine, no. we rolled Daniel's into the bathroom, no. I All think. Right. Well, you're going to have a little Christmas present here shortly. That won't fit. Oh, well, I Because I made it massive. Well, I'm an electrician, so I know how to move walls. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> oh, man. So let's get back on topic here. So basically, um, we have rolling shelves, and we're able to move them. So each shelf has a specific number, like 61, 62, 58, uh, 89, 69, you know what I mean? And, uh, so basically, uh, we have these numbers that have also A, B, C, D down, going down each shelf and how skew vault works is Joe will go list some product 
say, um, you guys don't see this now, but we've got this raspberry green tea I'm drinking here from Costco. It's good <laughs> stuff. Um, so I'm going to hold it up to the camera. And this is, say this is, um, we're listing this drink. And so we'll say we're trying to put it on 61A. And Joe will go build out a skew. And that skew will be specific to the shelf and what shelf it actually is. So it'll be on 61, which is the actual shelf. And what, you know, shelf, you know what I mean? Like the little part of the shelf. So it'll be in the top shelf. And when the when it gets sold, it will generate a skew within ShipStation. And they'll tell us, hey, the raspberry green tea is on 61A. Um, and yeah, so it'll tell us a specific skew where the shelf is, what, need to get sh what needs to get shipped out, and then that goes from there. But back in the day, you You'd know. You'd be looking through the whole warehouse. Raspberry green tea gets sold while well, Daniel drank it. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is, right? But at the same time, now we got an unhappy customer, and we don't want unhappy customers. We want happy customers. So it's skew all has changed the game big. Um, we're so one thing. Sorry to cut you off. No, man, man you cut me off hard. <laughs> bod. American driver right here, bod. <laughs> Those Canadian drivers. Dude, Canadians are the best. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> um, but anyway, with Skewball, first it was Joe for the first six months. And Joe was doing just Skewball every day. He would not have time to do any of the... He would have a hard time doing payroll. It really was that bad. So then Prodice and I went to the eBay conference this year. Yeah, it was uh, sick. That was pretty sweet. Vegas, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that I didn't even have one drink in Vegas? No, one drink. Staying sober, baby. Let's go. <laughs> so how long have you been sober? <sighs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, Almost a year, but, you know, I want to keep going the rest of my life because I'm trying to get off that stuff. It's not good for you. Yeah, bud. Um, but Joe was doing Skew Vault for a while, and I never – and. When did Joe go to J Japan? You got to tell me because I was just focusing on my lean. I was focusing on working, and I he just left in a heartbeat. He he just took off. He just I think took it was off. April. April that he took off. He's going to be here. I think I'm going to get him into this podcast because I really like this podcast, how it's going right now. So um, I want to get him in here. I want him to talk about lean, his wheels, 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 deals. We'll get him to talk. We'll get him second. to talk, yeah. But anyway, he went to Japan. And I came into work one morning, and it was like, we're like, oh, it's a week without Joe. Yay. Yeah. I walk in, and I see this message. Big red letters. Your eBay account has been shut down for auditing. Jeez. And I was, I was shocked. Yeah. Brody was shocked. Everybody was shocked in the warehouse. Our sales went down for the last six months. But mm -hmm. anyway, we got shut down, and I had to take over listings. All our listings got killed. Mm -hmm. We had listings with thousands of sales, and they all got killed. Mm -hmm. So I went on, and I, would, I FaceTimed Joe. Joe's sleeping in Japan, having it's a good like time. probably like 3 a.m. He's having the best night of his life, probably sleeping in one of those Japanese pods or whatever you call them. <laughs> you know, he's having a good time in, with the boys, you know? Him and Paul Aker just snuggling up Paul together. Akers. But we, Prody can tell you, we took over the listing part of it. Yeah, we started, you know... We lost a few listings, so we had to start over a little bit, but now we had Skew Vault. Well, we had no idea. Me and Prody had no idea how to list. We mm -hmm. were just, just thrown into the blue. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of had the idea of listing, but I never really got into it. Mm -hmm. And so I got, um, I started listing, and I probably did 500 relistings within like three weeks. It was just, it was the same stuff. We just, some of the listings, they actually took out SKUs. Mm -hmm. Some of the listings that we didn't, this kind of helped us in a way where we had to make SKUs for everything afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it actually kickstarted us because now we have SKUs for a lot of the items that we didn't have back in the day. And there are a lot of items still not listed and we're trying to get through all that stuff. We're working on it. Yeah, we're all working on it. We're working on it. It's It's been a been a struggle. But anyway, let's go get Joe in here. Let's get Joe in here um, and see what he has to say about logistics and the warehouse management and his lean aspects in the business and see what he wants to talk about. All righty. Sweet. Thanks for the introduction, Protest. I'm Joe, founder of Joe's GE. It's not Hoseja. It's <laughs> Joe's GE. Uh, it's common misconception. It's Jehovah. Jehovah. That works as well. <laughs> so lean is really important to our business. The reason why is because it focuses on constant improvement and limiting waste. And that's what we try to do in the business. And we believe that there are seven 
waste in any business. Transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overproduction, overprocessing, defects, and skills. And one of the things that's manageable for the, everyone here in this business is motion. We can reduce motion. And how we do that is by building an inventory system along with SKUs that allow our film team to be able to go to a specific shelf, grab that specific part, and ship that item out accurately. And we reduce any defects by shipping things out accurately because we have a system in place like SKU Vault. And that really allows us to be the best company we want to be. You know, lean companies have a smaller team and they do more work. And we do that by making sure we reduce the motion so we can make the most of our day. And that's basically the antithesis of the entire concept of lean. Two Second Lean is a big pillar to our company because uh, we started this in 2016, November something. And we started this because of our sensei, Paul Akers. And we learned a lot from him in the books and also had an opportunity to take the information from the book and start implementing it in our company. It took about six months or so to have people start believing in the idea of lean because it just, it, it's different. People don't like to change. It's very difficult to change regardless of what age group you're at. And I believe when we get older, we get a little more stubborn. And it's harder to change. But once you kind of understand it, you go with it. But I think when you're younger, it's, it is easier to change. But then you have to keep reiterating and reconfirming that thought. Because when we're young, we like to challenge things. And so it does come with the challenges as well that you have to make sure as a leader that you focus on that. You'd be a really good example of how to do that. And you keep being, uh, just pursuing it because not every day will you have a lot of feedback from a team but then you'll have those really rewarding moments where you see them doing something that we've been talking about and it makes you know really you understand then that you're making an impact and that the processes you're building you know the mindset you're building is going to be a forever mindset well i told the viewers about when we had before we had lean when daniel would be rolling around the the racks looking for parts for the solo two wired you remember that i do remember those days we have lots of photos of them <laughs> we didn't have a great inventory we had about two shelves we have about 100 plus rolling shelves now so it was a little bit different you know right now in skewball we have about eighty thousand components and it's a little bit more difficult to uh, i told them we're roll like around 25 percent in with all the parts and screws yeah. and everything we have a lot of a lot, a lot of way to go but uh, part of lean is to understand where everything is at and in the past we had no idea from a glance what and where everything's at now we can go to our system we can put a specific skew in check usage rate uh, check where it's at all the other stuff that's important to us also for warehouse management and reorder management kanban levels i don't know if these young we did, fellows we haven't, into that haven't talked about that but kanban levels are the single most important thing you could do for your business to make sure you never run out of stock of parts every company runs out of stock our goal is to get it to zero and we still run out of stock so we build what's called a Kanban level. It's a physical card that tells you what part you need to reorder, the amount they need to reorder, along with who you reorder from. And our cards have barcodes. We scan into a system and we send out purchase orders. But in the past, what we would do is we'd have a box of 50, and then at the 15 point, we'd put a, a Kanban card. And then when we get to the 15 point, we'd pull that and reorder. But what would happen is people would be pulling from both sides of the box and would end up running out of inventory too quickly. So we made some iterations on this. We started putting things into bags and then putting the Kanban card into there. So then somebody has to physically open a bag, pop it open, and then pull the card and give it to our purchasing uh, purchasing person. And then from there, we add it to an app, and then we add it to our Kanban board. That does create friction, but it also uh, creates accountability, and that's the one thing we didn't have in the past. So it's important to understand that some things are not lean in terms of faster. You know, the four pillars of a quality, uh, uh, four pillars of an, a good improvement is what? What are the four pillars of a good improvement? Number one is safety. Number two is quality. Number three is simplicity. And number four is speed. So speed is not the most important part of lean. That's the huge misconception. Everyone's like, we're trying to cut time, cut time. It's not time. It's quality. Mm -hmm. We only well, the reason the reason people think it's time is because it's called two-second lean. So you put time factor into the name of it, but... The concept lean was not invented by Paul Eagers. It's just his book. It's a Japanese Japanese thing, right? So he stole it from the Japanese. Got Absolutely. It. Yeah. Uh, the guy that created Toyota, uh, he's the one that invented lean and the idea of lean. And now it's, it's, it's well, being used in a lot 
more, con- you know, a lot more things than what it was originally intended for. Tell us how Japan was and how the how different their culture is with the lean culture being within everybody instead of just small businesses like us. Yeah, Japan's an amazing place. It's one of the places I've really enjoyed traveling to. One just unique thing about Japan is just something as simple as as you fly out, the people, the attendants that are taking care of the airplane are waving and bowing to you as a sign of respect. And respect's such a huge part of that culture. And you have to really be part of it and be in that culture to understand what it really means to respect someone and even something as simple as going to the mall you go to the mall the first five minutes of the mall people are sitting at the front of their buildings and they're bowing to you as you pass by as a sign of respect like thank you so much for choosing us Mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming and supporting us and they have that mindset and philosophy and the reason why japanese manufacturing is so good is people don't consider a manufacturing job as a bad job here, if you work at Boeing, people look down at you like, oh, crap, you work at a manufacturing job. I work at this cool coding company. In Japan, manufacturing, creating something physically is not only a culture, it's a personal thing that people take. And it, it's just such a – people take that on and they appreciate it and they want to be the best at it. They want to become masters at what they do regardless if they're installing an engine, if they're installing you know, a windshield, whatever it is. They want to be the best at it. And that's why, you know, we buy a knife from Japan. It's the best knife we'll ever have because that person that made it really cared a lot about how they made it, the quality of how they made it, how quickly they made it. But, of course, quality is the most important thing. So you've been to the cleanest manufacturing company in the world, probably Japan, and one of the dirtiest, China. I remember walking through the streets of China, or not even the streets, we're walking through this big building, and we take turn a corner and we look at this, this guy, and it's one dude sitting in a room about this size and he has wires everywhere the computer repair guy you remember this i do we took we took the corner and he has wires everywhere it's dirty it's nasty and then when you were in japan you probably didn't see nothing like that you definitely won't see something like that but it's also a misconception that everybody in japan's lean not everything in japan is lean just because something was invented there doesn't mean that's what it is because uh, toyota production system tps was originally iterated from Ford's, the the company Ford, the guy who created Ford, he had their mass production system, and they just took that and made it better. They're like, we're not going to overproduce. We're just going to take what's needed and make that. So they iterate on things as well. So, of course, China is much dirtier. They don't necessarily implement lean. When I was on the study mission, there was you know a couple people from China, and they're trying to implement this, but the mindset of China is so different. Everything there is about speed. If you flip our entire quality metric, it is China. Speed is the most important. Mm -hmm. The least important thing is quality. Mm -hmm. China's gonna make two of whatever, Japan will make one of, and they'll be perfect. So it's just a different mindset. If you flip everything on your head, it's a different mindset. If China screws you on an order, they don't care because there's a billion people, they'll deal with someone else. Japan is huge about honor. It's huge about not screwing people on deals and things like that. So. It is really important to understand not everyone in Japan is lean, but the cultural difference is everything. It is absolutely everything. You know, Japan, the word we use there is motainai, no waste. You go to China, it's waste. You know, the, all you see is waste. It's waste everywhere. Shit piles of stuff everywhere. You go to any kind of repair area, just piles of PCBs, piles of wires. There's no organization. There's no reason of, of it. They just don't want to spend any time. All they want to do is, how do I get this out of here? The least amount of money. Boom. There you go. So for them, it's all about speed. What's multi-night reversed? Not sure, but... <laughs> Not lean. <laughs> yeah, so waste maybe... Uh, all right, so we just <clears throat> talked about lean. Now let's talk about how we're going to prepare for the holiday season. Oh, and how. One thing I want to add with the lean, um, just one thing that we do here at Joe's GE, we have a lean um, spreadsheet in which we all work off of. And this is how we all come in in the morning and we have different jobs that we need to fulfill for the 3S schedule. So I created this spreadsheet, which has a bunch of jobs on it. I think there's 30 different jobs, everything from mowing the lawn to, you know, vacuuming the, the kitchen or cleaning the kitchen or cleaning some light bulbs or polishing the door locks because the six seasons around the corner. So we want to have each individual lock, you know, wiped down with some cleaner. 
And so we have this spreadsheet that has 30 different jobs on it. And then we have 30 different people here and each job is assigned to each person. And that person has to clean that specific area throughout the day. They also have their own three assing they have to do regularly. Like the shipping department has to either vacuum or mop the floor and then whatever other tasks you're assigned to, you have to go and do that task in the morning. We typically take 10 minutes to do that task and then you go back to doing what you're doing. So that's pretty huge here. We have a spreadsheet and how to access that spreadsheet. Joe actually made a QR code to go to that spreadsheet. So you take a picture of it, it takes you directly to Google Sheets and you'll find your name, that area you're cleaning, which is super sick because nobody has to come to my desk anymore and ask me what they're doing. Well, Prody just brought up a big thing and that'd be QR codes. Mm -hmm. We have, looking right there, we have our video setup thing and somebody just has to scan it and they know exactly where everything is. Super. You don't have to walk up to somebody and ask them what, the, what to do. Every single step is there. Yeah. And then like... We have like pretty much maybe half of the things on the spreadsheet. Um, half of them are common sense, half of them maybe you need some education on how to start the lawnmower. So we have QR codes for, uh, bunch of the 3s jobs and people just go scan the qr code watch the video on how to you know put gas into the lawnmower how to mow the lawn we have guys that took little videos and made qr codes for that how to weed whack how to clean light bulbs how to clean doors stuff like that so it's pretty common sense you watch the video and now you know for life how to clean a door you know and that's the biggest thing people just get educated on the spot and now they're cleaning they're 3sing and it's super lean well the eventually we'll have I kind of started this, Robots. never got, not got too much into it, but eventually we'll have like with certain problems of headphones, we'll have just scan the QR code and it'll tell you exactly how to fix it. So if we have a new tech, they can walk in and they can just scan the code and we don't have to have somebody else training them. They can train themselves off videos. If they need help, of course they can get help, but it's, it's getting that much easier. We're already doing that. So with the boat sounds for wireless, for example, we have all the videos for all the repairs. We have a new guy that we're training. We just sent him all the videos. He started watching it and they started working on it. Oh, there you so go. we already have all the videos. We just have to connect all the QR codes to the videos. Really lean. The m most important thing you could do when talking about and understanding lean is lean is intentional. So much of what we do is not intentional. You know, why are we standing right now for a podcast? What podcast are people going to be standing at? Because we believe this podcast is going to be better when we stand because we're going to do it faster. We're going to get it over with. You guys get the best information possible. And you're on with your day. We're on with our day. You know, why do we have this sheet here that tells us exactly what we got to do? Because we're making pokey okay. We don't want to make any mistakes. We have our, our script here of exactly what we got to do and make sure that we have a general, uh, we have a general layout of what people are going to be listening to. Yeah. And so we had a defect where we had another podcast that we did not like that layout. And so we made an improvement to make sure it never happened again. So lean is about being intentional. Why is the screwdriver right there? Why is this screw going here? Why are you not moving it closer? Why are you using this specific thing? You keep asking this question, why, why, why is what you're doing there? Why is the light there? Why is your mouse there? You gotta keep asking these questions. Can I improve what I'm currently doing and be more intentional about all the things we're doing? And when you're more intentional, you create a better warehouse system. When you're more intentional, you have a more diligent team. And the reason why we do 3 yesing is what Protaz was talking about. He called it all lean sheet. It was, we call it 3 yesing, sweeping, sorting, standardizing. Why do we do this? We don't do this to keep our building clean. We do this because we want to build a moda. We want to build habits. We believe building good habits is a good thing. And if well, you can't agree with... Well, building good habits is the start of any, any good thing in your life. Right. When, when so we believe that when we build good habits we're gonna have good products. When we, ha we have good products, we're gonna have great customer service and the customers are gonna be satisfied and we can create more value for the customers. If we don't build good products, then we're not gonna have great customer service. We're not gonna have great customer feedback. We're not gonna have great products. So we build and start with great habits. And that's something that's very difficult. When we, we, st we do three guessing there, we've been doing this for three years now. Mm -hmm. We still have people that forget to do it. Yeah. Daniel. This is a long life commitment as a leader. You have to make that, hey, today, not 100% of people did it, but we're going to keep doing this. And if you want to be part of this culture, you better buy into the culture or get, get, get out of the team because you're not able to fulfill what was requested. Mm -hmm. and we, as we hire new people, we make that very clear. When we just started, we didn't know. We were iterating. We, were, you know, we didn't know how seriously we we're going to take it. But if you take it very seriously, you understand that. We we're building good habits and you have to be part of the habit building or you cannot be part of the team at all. Mm -hmm.
because we're always improving and we're always focusing on striving to success and going further into the future and we all have to be on the same page if we're not then you know maybe you're not suitable for the position or to be part of our um club pretty much awesome so right now what are what are we doing so basically we're buying a lot of product and we're making sure all the parts are available we're making sure all the cables are available for the units. For example, we're getting earbuds, Samsung earbuds. If we have a bunch of those coming in, we got to make sure we have all the parts to be able to repair that, all the ear tips to be able to sell that, all the charger cables to be able to sell that. So we're preparing all the consumables for the units we have coming in. We're mm-hmm. trying to bring in more brands, more products, all at the time so people that are buying our products can get exactly what they want rather than what we can get a good price on. Yeah. So that's really important. That's what we've been doing to be able to mm-hmm. ramp up for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday so rush. Basically, we're talking about the holidays coming up. We have Thanksgiving. We have Black Friday. We Cyber have Cyber Monday. Monday. We have Christmas. All those big holidays where people tend to buy a lot of things. And so for warehouse management, I'm going to talk a little bit about shipping. So let me be- bring it back a little bit, uh, the Kanban system. So last year, um, around Black Friday, we ran out of bubble wrap. And it wasn't so lean that, you know, um, we had to get Joe, I had to literally beg Joe to go to like Home Depot or somewhere to buy bubble wrap. We ended up spending like four times the amount that we buy it from, which cost us money. We did get items out, but it wasn't lean. And um, I tried to make that not happen again. So we have the Kanban system now where I am the person you go to. I know where to order it from the, for the best deal. And now we'll never run out because there's a four, four roll Kanban. Once we get to the four rolls, you give me the Kanban, I, I order eight more. And then we just continue in doing that. And for this uh, holiday season, I ordered, you know, a thousand padded envelopes for both four by eight and five, uh, six by 10 to make sure we're good just in case we get crushed. We have, you know, if we ship like 400 things, we have enough. I got a Kanban system for that. I got a Kanban system for like boxes and other things. So we're pretty pumped uh, in the warehouse of the shipping and Basically, we're managing everything through Kanban levels, making sure we're all on the same page. I talk to the shipping people to see what we need to order up. I'm always being, you know, on top of it because the holidays are coming up and, you know, times get delayed, especially in like the time of need. It takes about seven days to get things to us. So we got to make sure we have everything off the bat and a lot of it. And that way we never run out. So. Yeah, the Kanban level is there. The reason why you have a reserve is because of lead time. Yeah. And so Kanban levels are always changing. We know that things that are coming overseas take about four days longer when they're coming during the fourth quarter, November, December. So we change the Kanban to be reordered at, at a sooner time. So then we could also we could deal with the amount of time that's going to take that's longer. So if we had a 100 reorder point, and we know it's going to take longer for us to get product we'll make our reorder point at 150 and then order more product so by the time we get to that by the time we get the product we still have something left to be able to be used and because we're using we're not just a parts house we actually refurbish product it's difficult for us to be able to gauge what's needed at what time because we only create the product that's needed when all the stuff you see on our website most of it's not repaired We repair on demand and that's part of the things that we learned from toyota in japan as well is made to order just in time manufacturing so we only know that we need specific parts once it's ordered and if we don't have that part we can't fix that unit so being able to stay on top of that and building the kanbans and being aware and very uh, diligent and intentional about how and when you reorder it's super important and that's that's a huge thing so it's a great think about it this way toyota is super lean i've had a toyota pretty much two Toyotas in my life. I've beat on them and they're running fine. That's because they're built with lean culture. They stand by non-defective parts. And Joe was telling us how if one part fell on the floor, they've shut down the whole thing for three months, the whole manufacturer line and make sure to see where that defect happened. Even if it slipped out of the guy's hand, you know, that guy's probably got fired, but no, none of that. (laughs) He's probably just got let home for the day. (laughs) We'll go by that. One of the craziest thing I also saw in Japan, so we went to see 10 big manufacturers, manufacturers like Toyota, who are actually in the Lexus plant, um, and I believe this was Kishu, Japan. We also went to Duhatsu, and we went to Toto, and 10 other companies, but the bigger one was Lexus and Duhatsu. And to see that on their assembly line, they're creating six different types of cars, different types of steering wheels, different types of wheels, different types of interior, and they're making them one after the other. 
they're literally making a made to order car one after the other they have trucks backing up every five minutes into their warehouses to deliver the exact part to make it fit within that 60 second window that each individual thing is so they have this to a t trucks are backing up just in time so then it goes on the assembly line so this electric engine and a gas engine can be made 60 seconds apart from each other just like canada makes their toboggans that's (laughs) right you know it bud just incredible one thing i also saw in in lexus which is kind of unique when they had lunch time they shut the entire factory down shut the lights on everybody went to go have lunch together at the same time within two minutes i don't know how many people they had in that factory in kishu but everybody went together and had lunch and that's cool that's yeah. unique that's a camaraderie that's just like that's mm-hmm. just such a unique thing to see maybe we can introduce that here at joe's so everyone just shuts the lights off and we can just eat in the dark i think that's a good idea vampires that's right <laughs> i heard on the in the dark side or at the dark side you got cookies so i'm interested <laughs> all right what kind of cookies though like chocolate sugar chip? cookies man oh hell yeah everybody knows that christmas is around the corner sugar cookies all day amen i got a candle that actually is a sugar cookie smelling candle wow. so just can it just smells like wax <laughs> <laughs> what's three bucks is, is it organic not organic oh, non-gmo it was, was, GMO. Was say. it's vegan actually oh well, i apologize <laughs> yeah so basically the season the holiday season is upon us and we're here to you know keep being lean and having kanban levels for everything skewing out different parts we're listing a lot of things right now we have a lot of as-is listings that I'm kind of taking care of. Aaron is doing the more um, re- reoccurring listings that we do, like Beats and stuff, Apple Watches. Joe's just hanging out. Just kidding. He actually works hard. Sometimes. Sometimes. We all work sometimes. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone have any, like, cool stories that you want to share, like, from back in the day, anything that funny that happened? Because, like, I started here, like, a couple of years ago. I mean, we had John that crack jokes all the time never worked but you know yeah. john would literally watch movies yeah he'd probably watch four movies in a day that's yeah. why he's no longer here <laughs> yeah well john was cool and all but he moved on to bigger better things so that's what they said all the all the blessings to you john Amen. if you ever listen to this so so a couple unique things that i still remember from the good old days as they call my parents half garage they were so loving they even gave me half a garage it was insane <laughs> we used to have everything on these plastic shelves and we made our repair for them now, and we started that about four years ago. We started our repair form with just a simple Google sheet or Google submission form where people put their information in, and then we would contact them with information on how they can send their product to us. And I remember when the first product made it to us, it was a miracle. <laughs> I opened my parents' home, and there is a FedEx lady giving me a box, and it says Joe's Repair Center. I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I remember that me and my brother Andre created a form on our website that would allow people to send stuff to us. And so from there, I remember we got like two or three more packages and we were pumped. Yeah. Like three packages in a day. That's crazy. People from around the U.S. trust us enough, these dudes in a garage, (laughs) to be able to fix their product. We had no systems. We had no software, nothing. And since then, we've grown about 500 times in terms of quantity wow. and revenue with that department and that really goes to show the improvement mentality that we have and it's really important because that's that's what drives everything now we have a full-time developer we have our own proprietary software we're launching our new software version 2 next week that we've been working on for an entire year which is awesome and dennis has been a really good job on iterating and we also working on other things like how are our customers interacting with our platform, what is confusing them? We take that information and then we make our software better. We'll have to get Dennis on one of these podcasts when yeah, he shows get up. Get him to fly, fly him in here. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's like you guys, you know, start in your garages. We start in our basements. You know? <laughs> That's right. Canadians, they have a lot of basements. You can come to America, no one has a basement. Like, what's going on? Well, yeah, we're all it, space. It's because yeah. Saskatoon it's so cold in there. You gotta have a basement, bud. Yeah, friggin' rice pod. Get it going. Yeah, a couple of Molsons. <laughs> yeah, a couple of Molsons, a couple of Angry Orchards, or whatever uh-huh. you call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those days are over, though. No Aaron, more. Do you have anything funny to say? You're a pretty funny guy. I'm a funny guy, but... Pro um, t- to be honest, Protaz is sometimes the light of my day because he stands like 20 feet from me to the left, and I'll be listing something 
or I'll be counting something, and then I look at him and he's just making a funny face, yeah. and just brings a smile to my face. Yeah, and no, him and the dudes made a really good podcast last time, and they, mm-hmm. I was just laughing the whole time yeah. because they're just hilarious and awesome. Yeah, last last podcast we didn't have grounds. We just kind of talked about what we had on our hearts, pretty much. Um, we raised the national flag and uh, just went full <laughs> send. But this time we have, you know, Joe wants us to be more scripted and. Not just necessarily scripted. We just got to be on topic and on point. These podcasts are to be more educational for the community that's watching them. And, you know, we like to crack jokes and have a good time doing it. But at the same time, we want to kind of teach and educate the people like listening or watching. And so, I mean, I I have a lot of jokes and, you know, I'm a funny guy, but I can be serious at times too. So I take my jobs very seriously. And, you know, it's it's puts the bread and butter on my table, I should say. Or yeah, and uh, basically, um, when Joe's I, sometimes Joe comes in with not a smile on his face, and I make sure he has a smile. So I'll just send him like a Snapchat or like something funny. Your or, like, Snapchats or something else. Yeah, I, I I like to snap a lot of things. I'm a funny guy. I feel like sometimes I should be a, a, a comedic or a stand-up comedian. Should be a YouTube star. Man. Yeah, and, rock star. And uh, yeah, I try to be friendly and funny for everybody here. Just kind of like lighten up the moods and make everyone kind of smile and have a good old time doing it. And I'm from Canada, so I have a lot of jokes and a lot of terms and terminology like cranking darts. Like you guys heard last podcast, all the boys are ripping darts now. So <laughs> I've got uh, a problem on my hands. Um, but no, we don't we don't rip darts. We just throw darts. That's like right. I said in the last podcast. That's right. <laughs> So great correction. Yeah. So I just want everyone to have a good old time, you know, just working. We have a good, like positive vibe here. Everyone works together. We try to be on the same level. Whoever's down, we try to pick them up, you know, and um, make sure they're having a good day doing what they need to do. If anyone needs education or any kind of training, we have cross training going on. And each person in each department is uh, known for what they do. And, you know, we can respect each other. And, you know, I looked at the headphones department and, I see Dave just cranking like solo threes one after another. And I'm like looking at this thing. There's wires everywhere. I'm like, man, I respect that. Cause like my solos broke. I took him to Dimitri. He like quickly fixed them. I'm like, man, I could have, you know, I want to, I want to learn how to like fix these. But at the same time, they're specialists, I, man. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Like it, it takes skill to no returns, right? Slot yeah. D-turn. Crazy. It, it takes skill. I respect that. I respect Dave. I respect D-turn. Anyone that's doing headphones, it's not so easy to take them apart. And I've tried to take them apart before, and it's like, man, I broke this clip. The oh, cool, boy. the you cool know? thing about all of this is we're all self-taught. Nobody mm-hmm. really has a, uh, like a certificate for this. Mm-hmm. We have our own certificates. We all self-taught. Um, schooling wasn't a thing for us. We just came in here. And we all went to high school and graduated high school, but well, not all of us. A, f- a few people went to college. Like, a I, few. I, I went to college back in the day when I was in Canada, and uh, I, I got her going, and I did my electrical and. Uh, Basically, I have my leg condition, so I can't pursue my electrical anymore. But I try to help out when I can. And basically, yeah, I just um, when I do parts or I need to part something out, I go to Dave and he like shows me what to do. It's pretty cool. Like he educates me too. Like now I can you know take these like weird rings off and stuff. I don't know what to call them, but we're Star Wars rings or something. We're all pretty much just self-taught and what we do mm-hmm. and. Yeah, it's, it, we it pu- we out pretty good. we pump up each other. We try to you know um, help each other uh, grow in the business, and you know, like I say, we have cross training, so we have um, people learning how to fix uh, headphones. Like Alex here, he's get he was parting things out. Now he's actually building solos, which is sweet. Dave's like kind of teaching him. We have um, people processing and learning new processing things. I'm learning new ways how to ship and save money for the business. Stuff like, like oh, there's a lot of things happening th- throughout the day. There's a lot of changes happening, and that's like the best part of our morning meeting is where we talked about the morning meeting, Joe, um, prior to when you were introduced to this great broadcast. So we talked about the morning meeting and like how we uh, talk about our improvements, our defects, and our change, change points. points and whatever's going on throughout the day, what packages need to go out, which ones need to go to the post office, and everyone's kind of involved. We can talk about our defects. We can talk about what changes are happening. And it's really cool. Everyone get, gets to talk about you know different aspects of how they're doing in the business, what they're kind of failing on, what things they can get helped on, which is sweet because like you know we're all here to help each other. So if we talk about our defects or whatever's happening, we can kind of grow from that. Right? We can get better. We can't get better if we hide crap yeah when bad things happen the natural reaction is to hide it we try to expose it and mm-hmm. make a culture where it's okay to mess up mm-hmm. but more importantly it's all about being able to re- fix that issue because we're a repair company we fix stuff right 
that's what we do so we always want to be repairing and fixing issues that are constantly happening every day and as long as we have a environment of a culture of people that are willing to do that people that are fixers and people that are breakers we can all make it happen we can make it work <laughs> well here's a little defect for you guys that happened to me i'd say uh, eight months ago i was shipping away there's a lot of things to ship today and i shipped a package to somebody and then like a week later i get a message hey this package is empty and i'm like what are you talking about you know like the first sense in your head you get is like dude they ripped the package open they took the part and now they want a free part you know that first thing that comes to your head is like they're in the wrong you know but here at joe ge we try to work with the customer we we think that they're 99 percent right and you know we go off we have cameras now or we always had cameras but we try to go look at the feed and see what happened so it was my fault i man it's funny there's a there's a battery that needed to get shipped out power beast 3 battery and I had it on my desk, the package was there. I got distracted and I swiped the battery with my package like to the side, put the label on, shut it and threw it into the bin. And then uh, we look on the feed and it's like me just like throwing the battery to the side and putting the label on. It was so funny, <laughs> man. And and we had issues where we actually threw packages away. <laughs> so the the shipping containers are near the garbage cans and basically now we move them knowing that we've done this once so we try to eliminate the defect so we had one of our shipping people actually throw a package away but luckily um we found the package before the garbage man came to pick up the trash it was actually a service so it was even twice as bad um that's the last thing we want to do is throw away a service exactly so um again being distracted or whatever and it was just tossed like a pretty big large package was just tossed in the trash so but we the cool thing is we recovered it and we cleaned we it off it. and everything saved and, it and we cradled it and stuff <laughs> yeah operational excellence is what we're seeking every day we make mistakes we are a flawed company but there is no other company out there that confronts their mistakes like we do mm -hmm. we confront them head on mm -hmm. we know they happen we just want to be able to fix the issues and make sure that we're not going to have that happen again and if we don't confront our issues, they're going to re happen again and our customers will have a bad experience. Mm -hmm. So we, I would say 90% of the time we're catching the issues, even though it's an issue, nobody mm -hmm. even knows it happened, yep. but we still bring it up because we know that it could happen to someone else. And we want to be able to prevent that from happening and in the first place. One last thing here, um, in the shipping department, we have a thing called shipping mishaps, 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 what, what's going on there, bud, uh, mishaps. And we track all the defects we have during the month. And then we have shipping meetings and we talk about kind of like what happened and what we can do to resolve or be better. So it's kind of cool. We've been tracking it for like, I think since January or maybe a little bit further on but it's cool like we have we can see the defects and how many defects we have during the month and who shipped what it's pretty cool and we can kind of visualize and maybe like when we start doing it down the years we can do like pie charts and stuff we can have a piece of pie while doing it yeah that's and, right yeah so it's pretty cool that we can track that and you know defects happen and it's not don't be afraid to speak your defect like we're human right and so in the shipping, you know, sometimes I ship the wrong thing or the other people ship wrong things. It's fine. We track it. We're going to have a piece of pie later and, you know, <laughs> we'll have a good time doing it in a freaking right spot. Quick question. What's your guys' favorite pie? Pumpkin pie for me. Ooh, apple pie. Apple pie. Yeah. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. Really? Yeah. Pumpkin pie is the way to go. Is it like grinded up pumpkins into a pie? Yeah. Basically. Pretty yeah. much. Pumpkin mash. So one more thing. So Black Friday is our Monday. Obviously two very important days for us. We're trying to prepare for that. And we're doing what we can because obviously we want to make sure that we can have a really good day financially, but more importantly, we want to make sure we have really good flow. We want to make sure all the packages are ready to go. And we changed a couple of processes to make sure we could do that by having all the technicians to actually repair the product, to actually clean and test and kit the product, which is a huge change compared to what we did last year. And what's really cool about that, that was brought up by Dave. And that he, Dave has been here for how long has Dave been here, Dave been here for? Six months. Six months, maybe a little bit more. He's 18. Aaron's age. Well, he's been here for a year. He's been here for a year. He's 18, and he still has. He made such a big impact just with that one improvement. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring it up. See, when we have a group of people that are thinking in a lean way, they think of much better ideas than I think of. Mm -hmm. You know, I suck at my job so bad. We hired 30 plus people to help me with mm -hmm. it, and so you got to be aware of your strengths and weaknesses, and then also be willing and be able to build a culture where people can bring these radical ideas that change the entire process. It's insane. So 
that's going to help us with Black Friday because mm-hmm. we're not going to have to clean it once it's sold. Everything is ready and prepared in our warehouse mm-hmm. so then it can be ready to be shipped the day it gets sold. We mm-hmm. won't run out of ear tips or charger yeah. cables. We may if we don't continue with you know our operational excellence. Well, as long as we follow the process that we built. If we're doing we what we're doing now, we won't run out of that. levels. So one more thing. So yep. the resources we talked about today is Two Second Lean. Really good book. Another book I'd recommend recommend is Lean Startup, really good book as well. And then the Toyota Way, those are some books that we I have listened to. We have it on our Audible for our company, and it's a really good book. Some great great resources that you can learn more about Lean. Lean is not something that we have created. Lean is something that we learn from, and we just steal all the ideas and try to make them better. And I think that's really important that you guys gain something from this. We want this to be interesting. We want this to be valuable and helpful for you guys. So if you guys have any questions about Lean, about how you can implement it in your business, feel free to ask us. We're not, we're not nowhere near perfect, but we're willing to help. And we've done this. We've done this with the team, and you know we are, we are practitioners of this philosophy we talk about, and it's a life-changing philosophy for your business. Sweet. So stay tuned to V2 of Warehouse Logistics and Management Warehouse um, video. Been going forever. I mean, yeah, this video we can talk about a lot, but. Um, Stay tuned to V2 if we do release. I mean, we will improve. Maybe in a year we'll do another, you know, segment of this and we'll continue every year making the same, you know, um, updates and telling you guys how it's going. And we'll uh, we'll tell you maybe in January how the whole busy season went and Black Friday and what we saw and Cyber Monday and stuff like that. Um, stay tuned to the next podcast. And um, let's see here. Alrighty. I think we're good. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to the Beyond the Sale podcast. It was a pleasure. We thank you for watching. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please comment down below. And if you guys want us to film anything else, please let us know in the comments as we will read them and try to reply to them as fast as we can. My name is Protaz, and I'm signing out. My name is Aaron, and I'm signing out. This is Joe signing out. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> Peace out. Girl Scout. Dude, that, that, that was a good that was a good podcast. So oh, yeah. What's that? That was a good podcast. Yeah. How's that fan doing? It's way better than before, huh?